This is a how-to video on how to install a welded wire mesh fence. First, you'll need to mark out where your corner posts are going to be. These posts are going to hold a lot of tension and so will need to be sturdy and deep in the ground. To set my posts, I am making an earthen cement mix. So I am just digging up some fill, some topsoil, and I'm going to mix in some Portland cement. It is best to use dirt without much organic matter in it, um, and ideally also having a nice loamy dirt is best. I don't have a precise recipe that I follow. Um, I usually just add and mix until I get the consistency that I'm wanting. If I had to give a ratio or a percentage, I would say you probably want about 10% uh, by volume of Portland cement to the soil and water. On this batch, I go a little light with the Portland cement because I know the post that I'm using is going to be pretty deep in the ground and is also very heavy. You can also add sand um, to your mix and that might help it prevent cracking. But really it just depends on the soil that you're using. In general, the thicker the mix is, the less likely it is going to crack. I find that one uh, five gallon bucket, about, I guess, 70% full, is more than enough for a uh, two and a half to three foot post hole. Making sure the post is level is also very important. Once you have your corner post up, you will need to run a string from either end. This is your guide to make sure that you're putting in your T-posts straight along that line. I'm using six and a half foot T-posts for a five foot fence, and I'm driving them in about a foot and a half to two feet. It's a good idea to place T-posts about every 10 to 15 feet. For this fence line, I ended up just estimating the distance between each post because there were so many roots and things in the way. Don't forget to take a break and eat the weeds. Next, you will attach your wire fence to one of the end posts and unroll it along the fence line. To pull the fence tight, you will need something rigid that fits across the entire height of the fence so as to distribute the tension evenly and not bend the wire fence. There are ways of doing this with uh, 2x4s and screws. Um, in this case, I found this white uh, piece of metal that was part of a shelf that actually worked perfect. Now, a come along is a very useful tool for this process, but for my first fence line, I didn't have this come along. And so what I did is I created a compound pulley system with rope, um, with parachute cord that I weaved into the white metal piece that I have. And that's how I tightened it. It is good to check and make sure that you're, as you're tightening the fence, it's not getting caught on your T-posts. Once your fence is sufficiently tight, you can go ahead and start attaching the fence to the T-posts. When you purchase your T-posts, they should come with T-post clips. To attach these clips, you will need pliers and a screwdriver. Ideally, you want a smaller screwdriver than the one I'm using here, but I had already lent my smaller ones to other people that were helping me. Attaching the clips is pretty simple and easy. The pliers aren't always necessary, but sometimes the smaller hook doesn't have quite enough bend in it. The T-post I purchased had enough clips so that I could have five per T-post, but I ended up only using four, and that's partly because I probably drove my T-post into the ground a little farther than uh, a lot of people would. This is definitely a project where it can be really nice to have friends come and help. Once the fence is connected to all of your T-posts, you can go ahead and release the tension at the end of the fence. The last step is to secure the fence to your end post, and then you're done. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and feel free to subscribe. Peace!